coming up today, why you produce the fight or flight hormone, even when you're not facing danger, and what to do about it, a natural protocol for rapidly reducing excess adrenaline. It's a great biohack and it's on the way. Hi, I'm Tony. I'm an author, presenter at Sky Sports, and years ago, I went to the jungle and got ill, very (laughs) ill. So this is my podcast adventure to find more energy. It's packed with biohacking, science, health tech, supplements, and some of the most well-known experts on the planet. This is something I spent four months of my life doing with electrodes glued to my head so that you can do a lifetime worth of meditation. Decide what you don't give a fuck about, which is something you don't care about. Some of it gets quite out there. I had some stem cells sent up to my house that I had stored, and then I injected myself with mannitol. And we even hack hangovers. Alcohol is poisonous. So is water and oxygen in the wrong dosage. So that's my podcast, Zestology. Live life with energy, vitality, and motivation. Welcome back to Zestology. Today's podcast rocketed to fame well certainly experienced an increase in his his followers and his protocols um when he was on the bulletproof radio podcast and now he's on mine and i've long suspected that adrenaline plays a role with me i'm a bit of a type a personality tend to be doing a hundred different things at once you know i mean today for example i'm recording this i have to pick up my son i've got about 50 different work projects on the go i've got two podcasts on the go i'm writing books and you know, trying to juggle so many different things. And actually, by doing less, might I achieve more? Well, that's the first question. I mean, the famous Da Vinci Code, people achieve more when they're doing less. And secondly, are my adrenaline levels actually countering what I want to achieve? And are my adrenaline levels just a bit high? So we will look into that today with Michael E. Platt. Yes, so are your adrenaline levels too high? Probably. But how do you bring them down? This podcast today explains why people produce the fight or flight hormone adrenaline, even when you're not facing danger. There's a natural protocol you'll hear for rapidly reducing excess adrenaline. In fact, there's a couple. And I'm 100% getting involved in this. Dr. Michael E. Platt is board certified in internal medicine and has nearly four decades of experience working with patients in varied clinical settings from medical groups to elder care medicine to health research. He has also written the best selling book on Amazon on the topic of adrenaline. There are very few books out there on adrenaline. In fact, I think there's only one and that is Dr. Michael E. Platt's book on it. So I'm very honoured that he has come on this podcast. And I think that something, uh, adrenaline is something we want to be all thinking about because I think more than ever before, we're all a little bit over-adrenalised. We live our lives at such a fast pace that actually what we need to do is slow down a bit. And if we can't do that naturally, we need some of Dr. Michael E. Platt's help. Here he is on Zestology. Michael, thanks so much for agreeing to do this. Really appreciate it. Well, I'm glad to be here. Yeah, yeah. Really nice to talk to you. Um, I am very interested in adrenaline and adrenaline dominance because I, and by the way, apologies if you, if you can hear drilling in the background, but it's very, very hot here in London, as I know it is near Palm Springs where you are, and I've got all the windows open. Um, okay. But um, I'm very interested in adrenaline dominance because I suspect I suffer from it myself. What can you explain a little bit more about it? Well, uh, you know, everybody has heard of adrenaline. You know, adrenaline is a hormone and it's also a neurotransmitter. Um, You know, most people think of it as the fight or flight hormone, but that's actually a very rare reason why the body releases adrenaline. Um, You know, the primary function of adrenaline is to provide fuel to the brain Most people do not realize that the brain uses more sugar than any other tissue uh, in the body per weight. And any time the body detects that the brain is running out of fuel, it just simply puts out adrenaline to to raise glucose levels. Um, Needless to say, there's a lot of people that have a lot of adrenaline. Um, 
you know, you, you know, anytime people use muscle, the muscles are burning up sugar. Uh, anytime somebody is using their brain, the brain is really burning up, up glucose. So, uh, and, and the brain runs out of fuel about every three to four hours and adrenaline peaks at two 30 in the morning, um, because the brain runs out of fuel then. And a lot of people wake up at that time. Uh, wow. I live quite a sort of type A lifestyle, really. And, you know, after this, I'm off to pick up my son. And then we've got a babysitter coming or going out to dinner. I've got to get a train across London. And it's all sort of quite busy. Is that also related to adrenaline? Well, any any kind of stress is related to adrenaline. Uh, you know, time pressure, um, whatever. It's a different world now than, than it was thousands of years ago. And, um you know, so people get exposed to um, all sorts of stresses from all sorts of directions. Um, but, you know, there's a positive side to adrenaline. You know, adrenaline as a neurotransmitter is what gives people intelligence. And it also enhances creativity in people that, that are right brain. So, um, so in, in fact, um, and but just to give a very slight picture of, of the situation, there are millions and millions of people with, um, with ADHD. And ADHD is all about adrenaline. Um, now, when I wrote you know, my book, Adrenaline Dominance, I talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. The only condition I put in the good section is ADHD, by the way. Right. And, and the reason for that is that the most intelligent, successful, creative people in the world have ADHD. So how bad can it be? And, um, and it's not a learning disorder, even though you know, they, they put it in that category. Uh, ADHD is an interest disorder. If somebody is interested, they will focus. If they're not interested, they will not focus. Um, because the adrenaline makes the mind go so quickly that if they're not interested, they get distracted. So, um, and, but also if you think about the 10 million people that have fibromyalgia, fibromyalgia is all about adrenaline. Yeah. Um, Lady Gaga has severe fibromyalgia. Um, if you run into her, have her call me. Uh, it's yeah. an easy it's an easy condition to get rid of, even though doctors say it's incurable. Well, that's why I wanted to speak to you on this podcast, you know, because um, oh, I I mean, the reason I started this podcast was I uh, contracted a virus, a little bit similar, the post viral symptoms to a lot of a lot of people going through with long COVID now, and wow. you know, went to all sorts of doctors, and they they came up with all sorts of diagnoses such as fibromyalgia. I heard the words ME and chronic fatigue, and actually didn't really know what it was but and that's and at my sort of darkest moment I thought you know what I'm going to do a podcast about it and speak to some experts like yourself to try and get back to health and it sounds like you know and I I think actually what happened was that virus sort of tipped my whole nervous system over the edge and I needed to really bring the whole thing back and completely reorganize my life in the way that I laid it all out I'm sorry to hear that oh I'm good now don't worry thank you though (laughs) So I think so. I think um, you know you mentioned fibr- fibromyalgia, and there's a lot of, I mean, you know, long COVID is such a hot topic at the moment. There's a lot of these conditions that are quite non-specific, but very debilitating for people, aren't they? Um, you're absolutely correct. But you know, the the body has an amazing capacity for healing itself. Um, but you know, the problem is we have a medical system that is controlled by drug companies. Yeah, and unfortunately drug companies have no interest in people being healthy. And as a result, you know, doctors are not trained to treat the cause of illness. They get very little, if no training in hormones, even though hormones control every system of the body. I can't really speak for the English medical system, but here in the United States, we do not have a good medical system. In fact, the United States is on the bottom of the list of healthcare of all civilized countries. Uh, we have the highest incidence of every known disease, including infant mortality, um, yeah. which is not, a, you know, not, not a respectable image. Thank you. No, no, no. And obviously you wrote this book, Adrenaline Dominance, and I, I want to get on to sort of what we can do in a bit. But I, what was the response that you had after you published it? <laughs> you know, um, the medical system here in the United States does not like me. Um, and, and the reason for that, you know, medicine is a very big business. And uh, in this book and my other book called The Miracle of Bioidentical Hormones, I, I talk about treating the cause of illness. 
And, and when you treat the cause of illness, people do not need medications. You can get off medications. And that's a real slap in the face, not only to doctors, but to the whole medical system. So I've run into a lot of resistance. You, you know, the reviews have been, you know, people who read the books very positive, but, but like I say, it, it's not well accepted by the powers that be. Right. So, so what's the reason for that? Is that because your solutions are not conventionally medical? Well, you know, there's that term alternative medicine, and um, which 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 I consider real medicine. You know, when people are taking you know prescription drugs, to me, that's not real medicine. And in fact, prescription drugs in the United States are the third leading cause of death, which theoretically means that doctors are the third leading cause of death. But you know, but that's what it is. You have a problem, you take a drug for it. But if you treat the cause of why the problem is occurring, then you get rid of the condition. They don't need the drugs. Um, so that's what I, you know, have always, you know, approach medicine that way. Treat the cause. Yeah. Interrupting this podcast for one moment to remind you that it is brought to you by my podcast partner, Inside Tracker. I'm so excited to work with Inside Tracker because I've been a tracking geek for a long time. And when you do what you love, like running and racing, like enjoying the great outdoors, it's it's nice to do it for longer. You want to do it for life. And Inside Tracker can help with that. Inside Tracker was founded in 2009, excuse me, by leading scientists in aging, genetics and biometrics. And they have a patented algorithm. So what they do is they analyze your body's data and you can do testing at home, which is brilliant. I've done it. It's very easy. Easiest blood test I've ever done at home. And then it provides you with a clear picture of what's going on inside you. Then you can upload data from DNA. You can upload your own tracking. You can upload your uh, wearable data as well. And then you get science-backed recommendations for positive diet and lifestyle changes. I think this is what we've been waiting for in the biohacking world, in the health world. Inside Track attracts your progress every day every step of the way and then you reach your performance goals and you live a longer healthier life that is the idea and that's what i want with this podcast as well and for a limited time very limited time you can get 25 percent off the entire inside tracker store so you can go to insidetracker.com slash zestology if you're 25 percent off you'll get it at that address insidetracker.com slash zestology also Please do let me know what you think, because I would love to uh, hear your success stories, how you found that it's helped, what you've learned from your tracking. I've definitely made a serious change as a result of the inside tracking recommendations. So um, I'd be interested to know what you can learn from it as well. InsideTracker.com slash Zestology. And and how much pushback have you had? Because that sounds to me to be really very reasonable. (laughs) It's sort of the basis of what we talk about on this podcast, I think. Well, you know, if, if you know, you know, if you understand hormones and, and how they affect the body, let me give you a very simple example. Uh, there, there's a lot of women that have problems with what's called stress incontinence. Um, if they cough or sneeze, urine leaks out. It, it's, it's a very, you know, discomforting condition. Mm. Um, but what happens is women lose that muscle control around the urethra. So it's a very simple matter of using testosterone cream intravaginally and doing those Kegel exercises in three to six days, it's gone. Uh, but women, they live, live with it their entire lives because they don't have a treatment for it. But that's just a simple example. So yeah, how extraordinary. Yeah. And I mean, it's really interesting because I think adrenaline is something I can, I can tell when I'm, I'm living my life a little bit over adrenalized. And I, and that's why I mentioned, you know, the, the sort of hectic evening that I've got ahead, it, it doesn't feel too bad because I have made quite a few changes to my life, but um, I, I feel like it's such a common term of reference that I'm surprised that you've, that there's only really one person who's ever written a book about it. And that's you. <laughs> you know, um, I, I got interested in hormones after my mother died and my mother died of breast cancer. And I realized right, and this is back around 1980. And I realized right after she died that I had inherited her hormones, but people don't realize that men and women had the identical hormone, different level, but the same hormones. And so I got very interested in hormones and I realized that I was 
not producing enough progesterone and I had too much insulin. So uh, I started using progesterone cream. And what the first thing I noticed, I'd never got sleepy in a car. I used to have to slap my face when I was driving, trying to keep my eyes open. But since I started using progesterone cream, I had never, ever had um, sleepiness in, while driving. So I got very interested in hormones. I tried to learn as much as I could. And then I, I started treating patients. And I had the luxury of being able to sit down with patients for about two hours with each patient, talking to them. And, and once you, you know, talk to a patient, 90% of a diagnosis is sitting down talking to a patient. But, you know, once, um, once I started talking to them and, so, you know, had them on progesterone cream and I started noticing things, a lot of things started happening. And I realized that there was something that progesterone cream was doing. And what it turned out is that progesterone was blocking all the symptoms of adrenaline. No, and, no. you know, and I started getting people, you know, uh, free of conditions that they had their entire life. And, you know, let me tell you something. It's very rewarding getting people well. It really is. Yeah. And, you know, to hear a, a patient say, doc, of my entire life, I've never felt this good. I mean, how often do doctors hear that? And, and the way your listeners can tell whether or not they might have extra adrenaline, um, you've heard of people that have cold hands and cold feet. You know, that's always blamed on an underactive thyroid, but that's actually adrenaline. Oh, I get terrible cold, cold feet. <laughs> okay, well, um, see, adrenaline is, is a, um, it, it's like a life-saving type hormone. And so uh, when, when it's released, it cuts off blood supply to areas of the body that are not needed for survival. And so that's where cold hands and cold feet, that's where constipation comes from, from IBS. And it cuts off blood supply to the salivary glands. So people get a dry mouth, but it also it creates a lot of tension in the back of the neck and the tension in the back of the neck can cause tinnitus. And it's the number one cause of headaches. You know, a lot of people have what they think are migraine headaches, but in, but in actuality, they have another type of headache called occipital neuritis, which is a lot more common than migraines. They cause excruciating headaches, and they're and this type of headache is unknown to doctors. But you can get rid of it within minutes just by applying progesterone cream on the back of the neck. I, I guess the point they're trying to make is that if you treat the cause of problems, you can get people well. And but in order to get people well, you have to recognize, you know, that what, what you're what you're dealing with. Yeah. Um, I mean, but you I'm, know, I'm fully on board here. I want to know more. I mean, I, I I heard your interview with Dave Asprey, and I'm I'm interested. You know, I'm interested in the headaches. I'm interested in the cold hands. You've mentioned progesterone cream a few times. Is that natural? Because it doesn't sound like it's sort of something that, that I'd find in Whole Foods. Unfortunately, um, you know, they, they you know they don't allow it to be, especially in England, they don't allow it to be sold over the counter. Okay. Which is ridiculous. You know, I'm saying they do everything they can to people keep people unhealthy. You know, uh, there, there are there there's no downside to progesterone. There are no side effects, so why not allow it? You know, um, you've heard of babies that have colic. Okay, yes, colic. Well, oh, oh, our baby had colic. Yeah, sorry, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Well, again, colic is caused by adrenaline, and yeah. and you can actually take progesterone cream and put it on the baby's belly. It goes away in three minutes. You know, and by the way, babies that have colic are the ones that do a lot of kicking in the womb, you know, which yeah. is also adrenaline. Right. But, yeah. but the point is, is that if it's safe enough to give to a baby, why can't people get it for themselves? Yeah. You know, they have to rely on doctors that know nothing, you know, to prescribe it. I'm, I'm just saying it, it's just the whole medical system makes no sense to me. And it's not geared to get people well. <clears throat> and people need to understand that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I'm so so going back to me, <laughs> Dr. Michael. <Okay. laughs> uh, um, what what else could I do? And then we've got the progesterone cream and I'm I'm oh, okay. definitely going to be looking at Dr. Google after this to see how I can illicitly get some on the black market here in the UK. But apart from that, what else can I do? Well, here's the thing that um, pro progesterone is helpful, but it's not the primary approach to excess adrenaline. You know, uh, just like, you know, you want to treat the cause of this and try to cause that. If people are putting out a lot of adrenaline, you have to approach it from the cause. Now, the reason why the body is putting out adrenaline is to raise sugar levels for the brain. So right away, that tells you that if you provide the right fuel to the brain, the body doesn't have to use adrenaline to do it. Now, the brain uses two different fuels. One is glucose, 
That's the type of sugar that it uses. Mm. And <clears throat> the best source of glucose for the brain comes from vegetables. Um, you don't think of vegetables as providing a lot of sugar, but, but you know, they're carbohydrates. They break down into sugar, but they don't produce a lot of insulin. You know, candy and soda are great sources of glucose, but they stimulate the production of a lot of insulin, which lowers sugar, which defeats the purpose. So vegetables are the best source of glucose for the brain. And then the other fuel, which are probably even more important than glucose, are ketones. And I'm sure you've heard of a ketogenic diet, which I, I don't recommend because it's a very hard diet to accomplish. But you can get ketones directly from something called coconut oil, which is great for cooking because that is a high heat threshold, or MCT oil, yeah. medium chain triglyceride oil, which actually is derived from coconut oil. And it has no flavor, so you can add it to anything. You know, a lot of people put it in coffee. They call it bull, bulletproof co coffee. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so if so, once people start providing the fuel to the brain, basically within 24 hours, you get a, a marked reduction in your adrenaline levels. Um, people that have road rage, you know, which is only caused by adrenaline, can get rid of it in 24 hours. And you can actually get rid of ADHD in 24 hours just by lowering adrenaline. Now, where the progesterone comes in, it blocks adrenaline, you know, which is good, and it goes and it goes to work within minutes. And um, and then the other thing that progesterone does, it blocks insulin. And why that's important is that as soon as people put food in their mouth, the body is putting out insulin. And when insulin levels go up, blood sugar drops. And when blood sugar drops, the body puts out more adrenaline. So another way of controlling adrenaline is control insulin. And what's nice about progesterone cream, it blocks insulin and adrenaline. So you can see how effective it is. If, if you give me your address, we'll send you some progesterone cream. Oh, well, that, sound, that sounds like a deal I can't resist. Hopefully okay. the authorities won't be listening. Um, <laughs> that, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's, that is absolutely fascinating, isn't it? And I think with adrenaline and cold hands and cold feet, I've long thought that it is adrenaline because it's often at night. And then if I wake up in the morning, nice and relaxed they're never cold in the morning it's always at night i mentioned that adrenaline peaks at 2 30 in the morning yeah um now you know a lot of people are concerned about weight and then and, and the thing about here you have a hormone that keeps on raising sugar levels and the whole thing about sugar is that it doesn't matter whether you're eating sugar or if the body's making sugar if you don't burn it up the body stores the sugar as fat in your fat cells yeah and when the body releases adrenaline, it creates stress to the body because it's a very powerful hormone. And the body responds to stress by putting out cortisol. And the first thing cortisol does, it also raises sugar levels to deal with the stress. So now there are two hormones that people are, are producing while they're well, lying in bed, not moving. And it's the number one cause of weight gain and nobody ever talks about it. You know, people are completely unaware. They, you know, people diet, they exercise, they do this, and they still can't lose weight. And they don't realize that they're putting on weight while they're sleeping. Um, yeah. Wow. Now, the, the other well, thing that I wanted to ask you about was histamine, which is a particular interest of mine. And I, I, I've actually got a separate sort of hobby website called histamineintolerance.net. And, you know, <laughs> yeah. the, the, the reason that I wanted to talk about it is because the histamine levels peak, guess what, early in the morning. And often people with histamine intolerance get really bad symptoms in the middle of the night, you know, bunged up nose, swollen eyes and unable to sleep. And I know when my histamine levels are high, I'll wake up very early in the morning and struggle to get back to sleep. Interesting. Uh, so the question is, why are they putting out histamine? Uh, no, I'm, I'm just wondering whether you've looked into histamine at all in, in terms of the fact that it's, uh, it's, it's quite, it, there's quite an interesting um, process going on when people suffer from histamine intolerance. And there's obviously hormonal activity related to it. Well, uh, I, I'll be honest with you, I have not. Um, but one of the, again, one of the benefits of progesterone uh, is that it's good for allergies. Um, right. pe people that have asthma, once they get on progesterone, can actually stop their medications. So, you know, so it could very well be that progesterone might help people with increased histamine as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, absolutely. I, I hope you're a member of the Progesterone Appreciation Society because I've got a feeling people are going to be buying a lot of it after listening to this. Well, <laughs> uh, we'll be glad to help them out, yeah. obviously. Yeah, yeah, great, great. Well, I mean, you know, thank you so much for all that all that you're doing with with adrenaline and and cortisol, and it all seems related. Um, 
I, I, th- I think, you know, I'd really encourage people to check out your book on Amazon because, I, as we say, there aren't other books on adrenaline. Um, <clears throat> before we finish and direct people to the book and, and everything else, what is one book that you would recommend and one tip for living with more energy? Well, you know, I'll be honest with you. I, I, you know, I, I have a problem with, um, you know, and we're talking about medical books now. Yeah. Uh, fiction books or something else. But the oh, um, fiction, you can recommend a fiction book as well. I, I, it, there's no rules at all, Michael. You can recommend anything uh, you like. Well, but well, I should say that that the, the the one doctor in the United States that I have a lot of respect for is Mark Hyman. Yeah. So I so any book written by him, I would recommend. Okay, great. Yeah, I I, I think he's brilliant as well. Am I right in saying he was Bill Clinton's doctor at one point? That could I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then what so, about one tip for living with more energy? More energy. Well, the um, well, people have to realize that when they have a lot of adrenaline, the, the people keep their muscle tense and they, they, that uses up a tremendous amount of energy. So, um, so one way of getting energy is to reduce adrenaline. That, yeah. um, that's what I would recommend. Well, I'm, I'm fully on board. Um, Michael, thank you so much for coming on Zestology. Where can people find your book and, and everything else about you and your practice? Well, they can find everything on my website. It's, it's uh, Platt Wellness, P-L-A-T-T, PlattWellness.com. You know, we have a, a 5% progesterone cream, which is the exact strength you need to block adrenaline. You know, we have other supplements, whatever. But And I'm always available to answer questions. You know, people probably don't want to call from from United Kingdom, but but they they can always send questions to questions at Plant Wellness, and I'll respond to them. Like I say, I I, I really enjoy getting people well. It, it's very rewarding, and um, but I have to tell people I've run into a lot of problems with the medical boards. You know, wow. uh, even though they've never had a complaint from a patient, but they have had, had many complaints from doctors about. <laughs> <laughs> that well, tells because, you all you need to know. <laughs> well, it's because I take people off medications and that's a real slap in the face to doctors. You know, that's all they know. Anyway. Michael, thank you so much. Uh, enjoy pleasure. Palm Springs. I, I was once there. I, I was once there for a 4th of July and I remember just wow. how hot it is. It's a beautiful place, but it is very hot at this time of year, isn't it? Well, especially in the summer, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, well, um, well, enjoy. And it's really lovely to talk to you. Thank you for coming on Zestology. Anytime. That is it. Thank you very much for listening to Zestology this week. Just before I go, quick reminder, this podcast is brought to you by Inside Tracker. When you do what you love, whatever it is, you want to do it for life. And Inside Tracker is all about feeling better for longer. There's a lot of longevity involved in Inside Tracker. It was founded in 2009 by leading scientists in the area of ageing, genetics and biometrics. And they use all of those things in Inside Tracker. So what you do is you can upload some data. They will test you for other bits of data. And then on a continuing basis, you can be uploading data. And it's really interesting how it integrates with wearables as well. And what happens is you get a clear picture of what's going on inside you. You learn stuff you didn't know before. And to me, that is the most exciting application of technology, technology, health and wellness. And not necessarily when you get sick, when you're already feeling good. I'm hoping that, you know, you listen to Zestology regularly and you already feel good. You already do things like run and bike and, I don't know, get outdoors, whatever it is that you might do, paddleboarding, whatever it is that you love. Um, then Inside Tracker can track your progress every day and make sure your performance is better and you are paddleboarding when you're 115 years old or something like that. For a limited time, you can get 25% off the entire Inside Tracker range. And I would love to hear how you get on as well. You can go to insidetracker.com slash Zestology. It's insidetracker.com slash Zestology. That is it for this week's podcast. See you next time. <laughs>